we're seeing with the conflict over there in Eastern Europe, it just doesn't seem like anyone's genuinely interested in peace. But as we come home to the United States and, and whatever country you're from, it's probably not very much different. But the problems that are inherent in our country, it seems like that nobody is really willing to seriously, honestly discuss the problems that we have before us. The people that are in power and are making things better aren't really making anything better. All they're doing is playing little shell games and they're stealing more money from my pocket and your pocket in order to give it back to us or give it to people that deserve it. When you have selfish, arrogant, cowardly people who are unable to, to stand up and say, hey, we have a problem. We need to fix this. We need to balance our budget. Those conversations are never going to be had. I mean, sure, some people come out there and start sniping with it, like, oh, we need to have a balanced budget. You're spending way too much money. But then as soon as they get in power, they just start spending money too. So it's, it's really kind of, it's just all politics, and it's just so frustrating because we are a nation led by people who are inherently cowardly and have no no desire whatsoever to actually engage with the real problems that we have in our country. And it doesn't take a rocket surgeon to figure out where we're going to go from here. If we're unwilling to deal with the problems that we have, it's like a marriage, uh, married couple that comes in for counseling, but then they're unwilling to deal with their problems. What are the chances they're going to stay together? Um, very low. Now, you may have met some of those bitter, angry couples that for, some, for the life of anyone around them, they, no one can figure out why they're still together. And that's kind of where we are in the United States right now. It's, it's like nobody in the United States can figure out why we're still together with those crazy people over there. And then you go talk to those crazy people over there, and they're like, those crazy people over there. Like, why are we still with them? Like, um, I, I think that a lot of the people in the United States... Um, you know, 40, 45% of the people in the United States all, you know, living in cities and stuff like that uh, want to lock up people like me and maybe like you. Uh, people out in the rural countryside want to lock up other people. And it's just when there's no attempt to reconcile, but only just attacks and, and, and everything's designed to just stir people up and get people riled up. Where do you think we're going to end up? Like, is there any other way that this is going to go down? It's going to get worse and worse and worse until it's completely broken, until it's just over. What do we do about it? Can you fix it? Can I fix it? I don't think so. I mean, we can maybe be part of a solution locally where you are, like your local officials, um, be very concerned about who's on the school board. Be very concerned about who's actually in the, the lower offices around you because those people are going to impact your life and you might actually have a chance to kind of impact them. And believe me when I say this, you showing up at a, a polling place and voting on election day, um, I think a lot of us kind of already get that that's not very effective. Getting in to the process early, helping the good people get onto the ballot, helping the good people get past the primary, that, that makes a bigger deal because just because they have the right letter behind their name doesn't mean they're going to be doing good things for you or really standing up and having courage. We're coming to a point where we need some people to stand up and go into public offices that don't want to go into public office. And when they do, they're not career politicians. They don't know all the ins and outs of everything. They're going to need a lot of help to get in. They're going to need people who are going to take the, the, you know, the, the petitions around to, to get them on the ballots. They're going to need people to run logistics for them. They're going to need people to volu uh, volunteer to be volunteer coordinators. They're going to need people who, who have a little bit of experience doing door-to-door -door knocking and phone calling and, and ha understanding the basics of how a election works so that when somebody, you know, if for nothing else, 
when someone comes along that you truly believe in, you can help them kind of get things off the ground. Because there have been a lot of good people that have tried to run for office that have stumbled over a lot of the logistics and the early stuff, and they never made it to the ballot or they never made it to the general election. So get in early and whether it's writing some checks for people or volunteering or, or doing something to help along the way, that's really something you should be paying attention to and that's where you really make the biggest impact out there. Because if these crazy people remain in charge um, they're like the Titanic racing over the ocean, steering towards every iceberg they can find. Um, and that's, that's where we are right now. And it's just a matter of time before we all go under with them because they can't, they haven't seen a project that they didn't want to throw money at. They didn't see a problem where they didn't think they could buy their way out of it. Every deal that is cut in Congress is lubricated with so much money, it's ridiculous. We have so many projects across the United States where so much of the money just disappears. Selfish, arrogant, cowardly leadership will lead us inevitably to our doom unless we can get some better people in there and on top of that, if we can't get better people in there, we need to survive what's to come. We need to be able to get through the storm ourselves. And that means, as I keep saying, unplugging as much from the system as possible so that we're not dependent upon things. So when things implode, when the dollar implodes, when all this chaos and, and stupidity blows up in our faces, you can be relatively unscathed. Um, we have some folks like... Uh, Bear Independent and his gang out there. Um, you know, I, I can almost see someone like Bear Independent kind of, you know, showing up uh, for a couple of days uh, to Refuge Medical and uh, where, where they put together the med kits and stuff like that. I can almost see him like going a couple of days before realizing that that civilization has collapsed, you know. Um, and, and hopefully you're in a place where you, that could be a similar thing. I think I'd probably, I, I'd notice relatively quickly with that the internet is out, but, uh, other than that, if the internet stayed up, I probably wouldn't notice anything for a bit. Um, there are whole days on end that, uh, that I don't leave the house and that's just, that's just how it goes. And can we unplug from the system as best we can? That's, that's all a matter of, of where you are. What are your values? What is important to you? Focus in on those things and make sure that you can do those things. If it's family, if it's your faith, it's about serving other people. If it's about, um, I don't know, just enjoying your garden and your pets and stuff like that, then just make sure that you're set up so that if all this craziness blows up, you can keep doing what your purpose here on earth is to do. For me, it's to do missions work and to do church work and to, uh, and to serve other people as best I can uh, to see the news, but then also to do something about the news. And that's why uh, something you see here um, quite a bit is to try not just to see the news and go, oh, okay, let's just talk about that or whatever, but to actually see if we can uh, do something to help things get better. And uh, that's my passion, of course. But uh, what is it for you? Structure your life around that. Let's live intentionally, folks, because uh, there's a lot of craziness happening out there, and there's only one way that this is going right now, and it's not the right way, because the crazy people are running the asylum, and they have no intention of changing things. They're going to keep taking it. All right, folks, if you found this video useful, helpful, um, you might want to check out this other video from me right over here. I'll see you over there, or I'll see you later. Steve Poplar.